Hey, Kermit Weeks here, Fantasy of Flight. Uh, the guys are moving some airplanes around and uh, they've got the man lift out. And I thought it'd be kind of cool to take you on a little bit of a journey to show you a little bit of where we're going in Act 3. So let's go, this is going to be pretty neat. So basically what's happening is, you know, the little museum hangar is over here right now. That's our museum light. We closed the, uh, the main facility that Fantasy of Flight used to be. And uh, what we're working on is the development of this. There's probably about 20 acres over here. And uh, working with the design and development of a, a great design firm out of Orlando. And uh, anyway, so pretty much this whole area over here is going to be filled. And one of the things that I want to include is, you know, I want to have my period airplanes in period environments. And so this whole area around here, including what used to be the original Fantasy of Flight, some more hangars over here, this is all going to be World War II. And then over here on the short runway is going to be basically uh, the Golden Age. And at some point, uh, when we get a... Uh, not part of Act 3 Phase 1, but part of Act 3 Phase 2, we're going to do a seaplane base down on the lake down there. It'll be kind of like a 1930 Pan Am Clipper base, so that'll be pretty cool. So anyway, so we're chipping away. Now, this building over here was built, and you know, the little gift shop building on the side there, um, it looks a little out of place. Well, it was, this whole building was originally designed for two hangars, but at the time, I could only afford to do this section, and we used everything north or on the right side of the building there for, you know, basically overflow parking. But as this gets developed out, there's going to be another matching hangar on the other side of the gift shop, and that's going to be something that uh, is going to take place. That'll be the first hangar we build over here because we already know exactly what it's going to look like. We know what the size is going to be and uh, we've already got the drawings. So as soon as I can afford it, that hangar is going to start going up and then we're still working on the design and development of this area over here. So I've looked at a couple locations for a possible control tower and I kind of wanted to go back and take a peek on uh, something else because we were pretty close to where we wanted it to be, but we've been working on this for a while. I've been working on the drawings and working with the people, and there's, it's just not quite right yet, and I want to make sure that we uh, build it in the right spot from the beginning. So anyway, so just hang loose. Let me go offline until I get into position. So what I'm looking to do is I'm trying to line up basically on the front of the building over there because there's going to be more hangars coming down this way. And, uh, you know, the controls are going to be set back a little bit. And it just kind of makes sense to have it. Let me get over here a little bit more. It makes sense to have it to where people can, you know, watch both runways. I want to put a little restaurant, you know, by the control tower. We'll probably end up making it like a little, uh, you know, uh, use it as a control tower during the day, during normal operations. But eventually, you know, at night for entertainment purposes and stuff, you know, we may end up using it as a, you know, like a, a bar. Would that be cool or what? Okay, so basically, I'm going to say this is about where the control tower would be. I mean, I think uh, we need to move a little bit over this way, but if you look back at the building there, the face of the building would be over here, and I want to put the control tower basically, you know, back from the building. I want to be able to see all the runways. We might have to trim a few trees here and there, but basically I also want to have like an upper deck and potentially a lower deck where people can, you know, eat outside, watch the airplanes fly by basically at the intersection of my long runway and my short runway. So let me move over a little bit and we'll be back to go up in a second.
Okay, so basically I've kind of got this thing lined up here, and as you can look, see the back hanger there. So it's lined up, uh, you know, off the face, because I want to leave enough room to have a little bit of an outdoor upstairs kind of a restaurant setting where people can sit up on a high deck but I'd also like to have one down below as well so we're still playing around with different ideas and I've kind of set the the crane or the the, the, the lift here basically back enough to where the tower would be here and there would be some I probably need to be I need to be a little further this way it's a little bit because I want to be back I want to have some roof space to where the people can can sit outside, you know, up to the edge of the building, uh, you know, where the wall is, but also have some outside deck space there. So eventually the seaplane base will be over there, and uh, we got to put some harnesses on here to be safe before we go up. So let me get my harness on. There we go. Okay, so if I fall off, at least I'll be comfortable for a while. I don't know how they're going to come get me, though. Okay, starting to go up. You can take a little scenery look around here over at the, uh, the, the restaurant, you know, the water tower. Go on up. This will get up to a certain point. It's really scary. Fortunately, there's not a lot of wind. Okay, that's pretty much that. We're kind of up, I don't know, we're probably about 50 feet or something like that. So you can see the museum hangar over here. And, uh, like I said, there's going to be another hangar on the other side. There'll be a face of hangars. There's going to be a corridor, what we've got planned there, that's about 60 feet wide between the hangar system here and that over there. And that's going to be kind of an entrance into the World War II area. You can see the main gate over there. And what we're designing is to develop this whole area over here. On the other side of that little road over there, we call that area over there kind of the pork chop because it looks like a pork chop. That's basically going to be where the, the, the parking lot's going to be. That road's going to be new and it's going to be pushed back a little bit. But you're basically going to come in an entrance. It's going to come in this way. There's going to be the V hangar here. There'll be a line of hangars up over here. And basically down the short runway, this over here is going to be the Golden Age area. And uh, like I said, in phase one, this is what we're going to work on. And ultimately, you know, we're successful in phase two. Yeah, you can see down there where the little windsock is by the lake. That's where the seaplane ramp is. I've flown the, you know, the little Sikorsky airplane out of there. I've flown the short Sunderland in and out of there, you know, out of that lake there. We've got about 6,000 feet uh, in a couple different directions. So, like I said, I've gotten the flying boat uh, in and out of there. And what we're going to do is we're going to do like a 1930 recreation of like a Pan Am Clipper base over here. So, but that'll be Act Three, Phase Two. Right now, we got to sort out this. So basically. Uh, we're going to start going up, and it's already you got a pretty cool view. So here we go. I already know from experience that once once we get up, we're going to have to uh, we're going to have to trim the tops of some of these trees over here to be able to see the long runway. Uh, that'll be a bit of an interesting exercise, but we've done it before because at the end of the short runway down there, uh, a number of years ago, we went in and we uh, topped those trees down in there, you know, to make sure we had plenty of, uh, you know, plants there to utilize the runway. So we're kind of getting on up here, and this thing will stop at some point. It gets really scary. But we're going to be about 80 feet high. Okay, that's it. You might want to take a shot down there and see how high we are, which is high and pretty scary. Okay, so you can see the cross-section of the runway. This would be the control tower height. 
you look over there, you can see where the long and the short runway cross. I don't really know what I want to do over there on that corner section over there yet, but probably that'll be for the maintenance department for maintaining the runway and the mowers and stuff. So we need to trim a, a little bit of trees over there to be able to see all the way down to the, uh, you know, the long end of the runway. Uh, I don't really have any plans for this right now, but as I said over here, this is going to be golden age, so it'd be, you know, kind of a combination of the Miami Pan Am Clipper Base and uh, Terminal Island in San Francisco where the Pan Am Clipper Base was there, the New York World's Fair and the Clipper ships were flying off to the Pacific. So that'll be phase two, but it'll basically will reflect and down there where the little stand is, where the windsock is, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little terminal building, which would be kind of similar in size and, you know, we'll take some artistic license. I'm not trying to recreate history, I'm trying to create the feel of the period. We've got a little bit different hangar and, and building layout here, but uh, there will definitely be a restaurant on the roof of the terminal building down there. We'll be able to do seaplane flights, you know, uh, some attraction elements over here. The airplanes are going to be here in the hangars, but I am not creating a museum. Please get that out of your head. I have no interest in being a museum. There's a very limited number of people that are going to come through here. They're going to just want to see airplanes. I'm going to allow that, but trust me, I know after 18 and a half years plus 10 years in Miami, there's not enough to pay the light bill. So I'm trying to create a product that will touch everybody, I'm trying to create a win-win situation. I think I can do that. So basically, if we rotate around over here, this is basically how high we are. This would be a pretty cool freaking bar place to have a party, don't you agree? So you can see the main entrance gate over there, okay? A little bit higher here. And the entrance would be from the parking lot, it would be basically coming in a straight line. So if you can imagine walking into Walt Disney World and, uh, you know, the Magic Kingdom or Disneyland, and you're walking down Main Street, well, in effect, the weenie, which Walt used to call it, you know, what's the weenie that draws you somewhere, you know, like the hot dog? Well, in the, in the Magic Kingdom, it's the, it's the Cinderella Castle, okay? Well, here, from the parking lot, you would see the top of the control tower. That would be the furthest point that you could walk to. We've got a couple of really little cool, neat things that would be coming in the entrance. Uh, we've got a really cool entrance. We've got a... Uh, our mission statement is to light that spark within. So the first thing we want to do is make sure everybody understands what a spark is, which is just a metaphor for you bringing what you truly are into this world of light, which is infinite potential, and expressing it in your own unique way and discovering it. That's all I want to do. I don't want to tell anybody anything. I want to create a place where people self-discover and potentially change themselves inside for the better. They're the only ones in charge of it. Nobody tells them what to do. And uh, I think if I can create that, I think I'm going to be onto something pretty cool. So anyway, we're going to have a little thing called a spark theater and it explains what it is and then you come in and then we split off. We've got different venues. Um, I've got some really cool attraction elements and uh, it's just going to be awesome. What I would do is down below here on the roof of the hangar, what I would do is I would have a restaurant area where people could sit below the base of the tower, basically on the top of the roof of the hangar, which would be basically about the height of the hangar over here behind us, you know, the museum hangar. So you'd be sitting there, you know, you could have a view of both runways depending on where you sat, and then also it would be, uh, you know, logical to go ahead and have some kind of seating, you know, down on the ground as well. So, um, so the Golden Age hangars are going to go kind of this way, like that, uh, potentially a little terminal building. Uh, right now I'm looking at like six hangars, so there would be like a Golden Age terminal hangar building in the middle. Again, another little restaurant, upstairs viewing. You do ride operations, flying, you know, biplanes, Ford trimotors, things like that. Uh, Stinson trimotor, I got one of those. And uh, so there would be basically two hangars next to the terminal building lined up this way. There would be another hangar over there, another hangar over here, okay, kind of a U shape, because I want people to feel like they're in the period, okay? I don't want to go from you know, it, it, they, they do it at all the theme parks. You go from one period to another period. So this will be golden age eventually. And at some point, you know, we're going to include World War I and early flight and that kind of stuff. But I've got, I've got plans for those down the road, so I don't want to go into that. But right now we're going to include World War I and golden age into basically uh, World War I and Pioneer Flight, excuse me, Pioneer Flight World War I will basically be in the golden age era. So. Anyway, so pretty cool, so uh, 
I'll let you do a quick view around here and uh, just, uh, you know, take your time. And... All the way around and you know the main entrance has always been there from day one even when we were open over here because this was where fantasy of flight was always intended to be okay i think we got a pretty cool plan i don't know about you but i love that party up here and uh anyway so we're going to head back down there we go Pretty cool dream, if I say so myself. got to get back to the design deal. I mean, we, we had, we had, originally we had the tower kind of over here, basically. And, you know, you could still see everything, but then we didn't have any seating over there. And we kind of designed a little bit of this area over here for back a house. In other words, like when you do party caterings and things like that, you know, people basically, you know, had a place to, uh, you know, had a place to park their trucks and all that kind of stuff. And uh, so anyway, I just want to make sure that we're making the best use of space because just putting catering trucks over here is kind of a wasted space where the part of the attractions here. We just have to come up with a better plan for the, uh, you know, to service the back of house. We're also trying to come up with something to where the employees, you know, can basically have a way to come in and out of the, you know, the attraction because, uh, you know, they're going to be dressed in different period environments. And I don't want somebody from the pioneer period walking through World War II and somebody in World War II walking through, you know, the Wright Brothers experience or something. So anyway, it's going to be fun. It's been a long process. Uh, we just want to make sure it's done right uh, when we finally put it all together. So anyway, I'm excited. Kermie Cam, over and out.